Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit, and Merry Christmas. We have made it to Christmas Day. What a wonderful celebration. I thought I'd share with you the wonderful high altar with the greens and the poinsettias. I really love the colors that are appointed uh, for the decorations at Christmas. Of course, the color of the vestments are gold or white, uh, but boy, the church sure is festive when it's decked up uh, for our Christmas celebration. Uh, of course, we've already had our Christmas Eve services, uh, which is usually the majority of the people who would join us for worship. Uh, if you haven't signed up for uh, coming to worship, please do check. We do have, I believe, a couple spots at the noon service, uh, stjohnsdetroit.org, uh, so please don't miss out on the opportunity to worship if you haven't already done so. And of course, we had our Christmas Eve service, uh, both outdoors and indoors, and all the glory and joy uh, that that is. Uh, the lesson that's assigned for morning prayer today is actually the same lesson that we did for the services for evening prayer. Oh, I'm sorry, for the evening communion services on Christmas Eve. There are actually two sets of readings that are assigned for the Feast of the Nativity. Uh, one set of readings is the very familiar story of St. Luke uh, with the angels and, and the, 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 you know, the manger in the swaddling clothes. You, know, you heard the story, right? And it's actually the same lesson that's appointed for this morning. The other lesson that'll be done at the services today, uh, Christmas Day, is actually a theological expo exposition of the birth of Jesus uh, from St. John's Gospel, the prologue. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, the Gospel lesson for Christmas Eve, however, ends uh, right before the story of the shepherds coming to adore Jesus, but it's included in the morning prayer lesson. So, so why don't we jump right to that? Chapter two, beginning at verse number uh, 15. You know, it'd be better if I put on my glasses, huh? I'll be able to actually see it. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And they all that heard it wondered at these things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that God, that they had heard and seen and was told unto them. So really the wonderful thing that's happening in today's lesson, uh, in addition to how we read, what we read last night about the actual birth of Jesus, is the fact that right from the start, we have the parade of people coming to Jesus to adore him and to worship him and to glorify him. It starts with the shepherds. The shepherds were the simple folk living out in the countryside who heard this story from the angels. Now the angels, of course, Mary and Joseph both have, uh, have had in contact already with angels, uh, Joseph in a dream, Mary uh, face to face with the angel Gabriel, the archangel Gabriel. But uh, here we have the story of the angels coming to the shepherds to announce the birth of Jesus. And the shepherd's reaction is, let's go and see what this is all about. Uh, and in doing that, they tell Mary and Joseph exactly what they saw, uh, adding more to the, this amazing and remarkable act of what, it, of what God is doing through them in particular. And they come and they worship him. Now, you're saying to yourself, where are the wise men? They're coming, they're on the way, okay? Because the story of the wise men is actually uh, the Feast of the Epiphany, and that's January 6th. Um, so between now and January 6th, we'll have Jesus' circumcision and his giving of the holy name. That's our celebration on, on New Year's Day. That's no, uh, January 1st. Uh, and then we will celebrate the coming of the wise men. But notice something, the church kind of does an interesting thing. First of all, the shepherds represent the people of Israel, right? The shepherds are people in the countryside around Bethlehem. And they represent the announcement of the fulfillment of God's promise to send a savior to the people of Israel the Jews, the people of the original covenant with God. And so they're the first people, those shepherds, to witness this miraculous and amazing thing that God has condescended to take flesh and to dwell among us. Uh, and then on January 6th, we're gonna talk about the expansion of that by having the outsiders, the Gentiles, those who are not members of the original covenant, having them also be a part of, of what God is doing in not only revealing himself to the world, in the, in the person of this small child, Jesus, but ultimately then including those outsiders, the Gentiles, 
into this new covenant, which Jesus will seal in his own blood in 33 years on the cross. Now, enjoy your Christmas. Celebrate your Christmas and give thanks to Almighty God for the gift of the birth of Jesus Christ, which is the beginning of the earthly life of the one who will seal for us our salvation. But I'd be remiss if I didn't remind you that we do have worship on Saturday and Sunday and the sign-up list on the Sign Up Genius is already available for Saturday and Sunday's worship. Saturday is the Feast of St. Stephen and Sunday is the Feast of St. John. So whether you come Saturday night or Sunday morning, you'll get uh, some interesting lessons. And uh, again, we will continue our Christmas joy at the same time. I hope you have a blessed and holy Christmas day. God bless you.